Hi there, I hope you are doing well. So today, today's video is going to be a little bit different compared to all of the previous videos I've done in the past. I have fallen into the rabbit hole of fountain pens and bought my first fountain pen from Bookbinders back at the end of September and I fell in love with this so much so that I placed several orders from a whole bunch of different Australian uh, companies like Paper Kuka, Bambugu, Scratch and Jotter, The Desk Bandit and I also have a happy mail from um, a planner friend so I thought I would film a collective haul video for you, just unboxing everything. I have to admit though that I got a little bit curious and I have already opened a few of the boxes. I hope to share everything with you in today's video. So if that's something that you're interested in, I hope you'll stick around. This video is very much um, delayed so I received everything towards the end of September beginning of October but it has been a crazy month I feel like so much happened in October a lot of things happened in um, terms of my personal life but let's get started so I guess I'll go through what I got first from bookbinders from Melbourne so the first thing that I got is this Kawako Sports fountain pen and it doesn't actually come with this clip I got this from another company that I'll mention a bit later but it basically um, looks like so and I have to admit at first I was a bit confused because I've always been curious about fountain pens but never made the dive into getting one because it felt a bit intimidating with all the different inks and the different parts that go with a fountain pen and I thought that maintaining it cleaning it etc would just be too much work so I never ended up getting a fountain pen until now um so this is the first pen I, I got I believe it's in it's either a fine or extra fine nib because I like um, my writing on the thinner side let's just go ahead and get all this out of frame so we can have somewhat of a clean slate and apologies it's really hard to keep a white table clean and i also have this stylogy here um, to test out the inks that i have ordered um, so let's go ahead and show you what this looks like i've been loving this for um journaling so this is the only fountain pen i've been using because i've been saving all these other pens for this video so <laughs> they've been sitting on my desk or under my desk for a month now um but yeah so let's get started let's flip to a new page and let me show you how this writes just in case you're curious oh and if you're um someone who's interested in fountain pens and like me never made the leap to getting a fountain pen um i would highly recommend them because i've always been like a avid gel pen user and i swear by them thought i would never never switch to anything other than a gel pen um but ever since using a fountain pen i feel like my writing game has stepped up a bit more they write so smoothly and i feel like it does add to the whole writing experience especially if you're journaling where you're writing a lot um so yeah let me just zoom into the page and once again excuse my dirty table let's write something hello so this is a super fine tip i feel like it's comparable to like a 0.5 mil nib in terms of gel pens and yeah you can tell you can tell how much I've been loving this pen because I didn't realize that it actually oops didn't realize that it actually came with a cartridge but by the way if I do something that's a fountain pen no-no please let me know down in the comments below because I am still a noob um, and then I will try to correct myself um, but yeah you can kind of see how much ink I've used. I've basically used like three quarters of the cartridge and I didn't realize 
that it doesn't come with a refillable cartridge because when I was first researching different fountain pens, I saw that people were using like things called converters, which essentially allow you to use different inks from ink bottles. But obviously I didn't do my research properly because the Kawa code doesn't automatically come with them. You have to purchase them separately, but this one came with a ink cartridge. So I would highly recommend this pen for a beginner. It's, it was super easy to set up. Um, all I had to do was just untwist this put in the cartridge and then wait a couple of seconds and the ink flowed like almost instantaneously after that and smoothly. I haven't had any issues apart from when I accidentally leave the cap off for too long and then the ink dries at the tip. But yeah, if you're a fountain pen beginner like me, would highly recommend getting this for your pe first pen um, because it's super affordable. A lot of the pens when I was first researching were around the 100, 200 Australian dollar mark, which I thought was a bit out of my budget, but I found this one for around, I think it was about $45, $50 from Bookbinders. And because of the relatively affordable price compared to the other ones, I thought I would take the leap and get one. So yeah, that one's the Kawako. And as you can tell, it's a nude it's a beautiful nude color and i was really happy to have this as my first pen so along with the order from bookbinders i got this sailor ink in potsu potsu i believe it's a blue pen, blue ink at the time i didn't realize that the kawako comes with a ink cartridge which isn't refillable um now i know but yeah, this is a lovely blue ink. I'll take it out of the package. So since I already have a couple of dark blue cartridges for my Calico, I've got this one and a couple that you will see coming soon. I'm going to give this to a fellow planner friend who's interested in getting into fountain pens. So that's my haul from bookbinders by the way i'll also leave all of the links to the different shops that i bought from in the description box um by no means by the way is this video sponsored by any of them i purchased them with my own money and all of my thoughts and opinions are my own but yes um let's move on to the next two pens that i ended up getting um which is kind of crazy to think i ended up placing orders from amazon so these are the only two things i ended up getting from amazon just because at the time i wanted them really quick i loved this one so much so that i ended up getting a black calico i wanted a black one to specifically keep black ink in and this one just happens to have gold hardware compared to the nude one here which has silver hardware and i haven't quite figured out which type of hardware I prefer yet. I feel like the gold looks super classy, but the silver one looks really modern. And then I really do also love burgundy. Um, so I ended up also getting a burgundy colored cover coat. Very curious to know why this one came like this. And it kind of feels like it's already been opened, but I'm not sure. I believe this one came from um, Japan, actually. But I'm not sure whether it's a returned product. But yeah, I ended up getting this burgundy colored one so that I could use burgundy inks. I haven't quite found a burgundy ink that I want to try yet. So if you have any recommendations of um, burgundy colored inks that I should go for, let me know down in the comments below. I would love your recommendations. Um, so those are my three Kawako pens. And I just realized that, I don't know if it's just me, but the burgundy one looks like it's a little bit longer than the black one. Is it because I haven't push the lid in far enough it could be could just be me I'm not sure <laughs> but this one does not have the ink actually I'm curious to know whether the black one has ink as well like I'm assuming that they wouldn't put the ink in right away um, 
but some for some reason this calico that I got from bookbinders had ink already in it um, so that's super interesting to know that the Amazon ones don't have ink um, but yeah that's my trio of calico sports I'm slowly building up my collection let's go on to the next order that I placed which was with the desk bandit all right so here I have my order with the desk bandit and um, after getting my first pen i actually posted in a couple of facebook groups and i asked you guys on instagram if you guys had any recommendations for different inks and pens etc for a newbie and a lot of you mentioned um, to purchase inks from the desk bandit they're based in i believe western australia and the amazing thing about the desk bandit is they offer ink samples so i believe that they're they're either two or three milliliter samples. They only cost around $3 for a sample, which is amazing. Thank you to the Desk Bandit for offering that service. I have already opened this box because I was actually watching someone else's video um, and their unboxing from the Desk Bandit. And the person mentioned that they always give out a Tim Tam. So I opened up the box and gave the Tim Tam to my partner. So that it wouldn't melt and it's a good thing I did because otherwise the Tintan would have been sitting here for over a month. Um, so opening up the box you can tell that I've already had a peep inside. This is the invoice. I'm gonna um, pull that to the side so I can let you know what ink samples I ordered. Um, so everything is wrapped up real good and protected. They did have the black tissue paper as well. And of course some bubble wrap to protect the inks but I really love their logo I thought that it was so cute I'm gonna move this box to the side so here are all of the ink samples that I received and I'm probably gonna swatch them in this video today by the way this video might be super super long so if you haven't already done so I would highly recommend you to pause this video now go grab yourself something to drink um, or snack on while you watch the rest of this video okay so getting back into it we have um a whole bunch of samples here so from the invoice i can see that they are two milliliter samples which um i thought at first would be like a few droplets i have no idea why but i feel like from what i can see right now it is definitely a decent amount of ink that you get and the other ink that i got is this majestic maple syrup by ferris wheel press and i saw this on charmaine Dulac's channel youtube channel i'll link her down below but she did a swatch on this um, ink and it was the most stunning ink ever so i thought i would grab a full bottle um because i'm sure i'm going Going to love this all right so it looks like i actually ended up getting another fountain pen as well um so i ended up getting the ferris wheel press um fountain pen in lady rose i ended up getting the fine steel nib because i am a fine nib type of girl um so this is what it looks like and i really love the packaging they've done a really good um job of designing everything and the gold foil and matte touch box feels amazing so this is what it looks like so it says fountain pen with custom ground nib and then it says refillable converter so it looks like this one comes with a converter unlike the calico um, and this one is a silver um, hardware I believe so just untwisting it. Do I untwist it? Do I pull it? I feel like I untwist it. Sorry guys. Noob alert. Clearly. Uh, it's not coming out. Oh, okay. I thought I was going to break it just then. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's a silver nib. Let's see if I can zoom in. And look at that there's like a little tiny horse at the end like a carousel which is so cute let me do it this way um i'm sorry for my dry hands guys ignore that i've been opening a lot of boxes which dries out my hands um but yeah look how stunning that is 
All right, um, so apparently this comes with a converter as well, which I need to figure out how to actually use. Oh yeah, okay. I think that's what I've seen in videos, but I have no idea how to use this. So I am going to watch a video at some point and figure that out. Um, but I'm really happy that it comes with it. So that means I can probably put this ink in here. I reckon that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Um, but we have a whole bunch of other inks coming up in the video later on that I did buy. So we will see once we've done all the swatches. So that's the new, the new to me at least. First we'll press carousel fountain pen. So I've got to figure out how to close this now. Do I, does it twist or does it pop in? Uh, I think it's a pen that pops in. So I think I've been used to using this pen, which is a twist pen. Um, sorry, it has a twist cap. I should probably close this as well um, before it dries out, but it's a twist cap. So I've been used to that. Um, this is my first phantom pen that pops out like so. Okay, let's start with the swatches. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna move this pen and I'll be figuring out how to use this a bit later. I keep twisting it because I keep thinking it's my like my calicos, but no. Um, so I have my little Stalogy A6 notebook that we're going to break in with all of these um, inks. So I saw an, this is going to be my first time doing ink swatches. So um, if, like I said, I do something that is totally not the norm, um, or I'm super awkward um, swatching everything, please ignore that <laughs> because I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's be honest. I'm not going to pretend I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I saw in someone's video that they were using Q-tips to swab and I actually ended up getting a dip pen from Bamboo Group because I was talking to Anna from ABC Plans and she mentioned that a dip pen is a really good way to just um, write out a couple of lines like if you want to write in a specific color for a header but you don't want to fill up a cartridge completely and then have to go through the whole cleaning process so she mentioned to get a dip pen and she recommended one from sailor i believe which i did get from bamboo so before we get started with the swatches i'm going to go through the bamboo haul so let's move this back out of the way um gonna put it here for now and get the bambuga order so i have the bambuga order and i have also opened it a little bit just to peep inside um but let's go through it together actually this is going to topple over if i open the box so i'm gonna move it over to the side there all right so this is my order from bambuga they are based in melbourne so I ended up getting a Midori notebook. This is a grid notebook in the A5 size. My intention with this was to use it to practice Japanese, but I have not been very good at practicing every day. I signed up for Duolingo and I was pretty consistent for the first couple of days. I think I had like a two or three day streak and then life kind of just got in the way and I just did not end up having the time to practice Japanese every day. Yeah, a lot kind of happened in October and let's just say I'm very excited for November. It's going to be a fresh new month and hopefully things are bit better. So the other thing I got was the Kawako Piston Fountain Pen Converter. So this is the one that goes into the Kawako that allows you to um, change up the inks. Um, I have been told that the Kawako Piston Converter is a lot smaller than different brands and it feels like that might be the case because this is teeny tiny and if we compare that to the um, ferris wheel press one you can tell how much more ink the ferris wheel oh my gosh i just tried to grab that um because i forgot it was in the plastic bag but you can tell how much smaller the Kawako one is compared to the carousel sorry 
compared to the first WordPress one. So I guess that just means I can switch out inks more frequently, which is going to be good. Let's put that one back. So that's for my calico. I'm going to have to watch a video on how to actually fill it. I have seen that for some converters you need like a syringe, which I don't have. We will cross that bridge when we cross it. <laughs> and the last thing I got was this uh, Sailor. Sailor appears to be a very popular brand in the fountain pen community. Um, so I got this Sailor Hoko um, de Pen and I believe I got it in the fine nib as well because I like fine nibs. So yeah, let's unbox this so we can actually use it. So it's a blue one. I believe they come in different colors as well. Um, like gray and I think I've seen white ones as well. Doesn't seem to be a nib that I can see. I don't know if it's... Hmm or a cap. Let's read the instructions. Um, okay, probably, shouldn't have, probably should have read the instructions first. It looks like this blue bit is the nib of the pen and there is... I can't read Japanese by the way, although I'm learning. I've only started learning the alphabet um, and a couple of words in terms of vocabulary, but it appears there's like a flat tip version and a round tip version um, and judging from this one this one is the round tip version I don't know the exact names for the different types so I'm just gonna, gonna call them round and flat tip and it looks like the nibs um, clip onto the end of the fountain pen so I am assuming we can pull this out oh okay so we can pull that out and that's the nib there and then I'm guessing you kind of put it in here Ooh, that's cool um, that's very very nifty so there's no um, lid on this I believe let's see if we can open this up at the end I don't believe that opens up but that is the dip pen and there's a really cute little heart on the nib there So I guess now that we have a dip pen, um, let's test out the inks from the Dust Bandit. Okay, so I have moved out the packaging. Um, I believe with a dip pen, you need some water so you can clean off the inks afterwards. And I'm going to line this up again. And that's the last one. And of course we need some water. So I'll go grab some water as well. I'll be back. Okay, and last but not least, I believe we need some napkins to dry off the pens. And I also have some cotton buds or Q-tips as you call it in North America to do paint swatches is what I'm gonna call it, but like a patchier swatch of the ink. And yes, as I mentioned, I'm using the incorrect terminology um, please forgive me because I have no idea what I'm doing. So if you're new to fountain pens, we are learning together. Okay, so let's start off with the first one on the invoice because I feel like it just makes the most sense. Um, so the first one on the invoice is the Ferris wheel press down the rabbit hole. And this is a very fitting name because I've essentially fallen down the rabbit hole of fountain pens. And blushing mushroom um, just sounds so delicious. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so apparently this is from the Alice in Wonderland collection. I'm not sure if it's actually a um, inspired thing or if it's an actual collab. I have to do more research on that. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to dip this into the ink and I'm assuming that the ink kind of like um, when you dip it at least it's going to well up in the hole there because there's no uh, ink cartridge. So all I have to do is just submerge the nib until past the love heart um, and I'm assuming the ink flows down from the little well that forms and through the nib and once that runs out you've run out of ink so that's kind of what I'm assuming happens with these never actually used one before so 
Do I need to like dip it in water? I'm assuming not because it has you have to dry it before you go to the next sink. Anyway, excuse my train of thought. I'm just trying to figure out how everything works. Um, but let's just let's just dive into it, shall we? And if you can hear like um beeping in the background, that's the forklift from next door. So do I need to shake this up? I feel like if I don't the glitters are just gonna be all at the bottom. Let's just close this first before I show you. But you can kind of see that the glitter kind of, what's the word? Sediments? Like it's stuck at the bottom. So do I shake it? I'm assuming I do. Otherwise, how will I get the glitter up? <laughs> um, okay, let's open this. As you can tell, I am super unsure of everything I'm doing. But now let's zoom in. And apologies for the lighting. It's not the best lighting situation here. Um, I need to get like proper photography lights or um, filming lights. If you guys have any recommendations of really good lights to get, um, please also let me know down below because um, my intention is to keep filming these types of videos if you guys enjoy watching them a bit more casual compared to all of my other videos that i do but let's go ahead and dip this in i'm gonna do it this way you won't be able to see but i'm just gonna dip it in to where the heart gets filled up and it kind of looks like it's like a blue color a deep blue so oops out of frame there but you can kind of see how the inks formed in the well there and it's just gotten all over the edge of the um, pen so I'm going to try to avoid avoid touching that otherwise I'll have super inky fingers and let's close this because my fear is that if I put the test tube down without closing it I'm going to knock it over and then it's going to be a hot mess all right, so let's test this blushing mushroom. So blushing mushroom. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. It's like a super, um, almost like periwinkle kind of like purple color, a grayish, a grayish blue color. And I really like that. But I don't know if I can see any glitters. What's today's date? Today's date is the 28th of October. Excuse my writing. Um, here it is. So that one, um, so it writes a little bit dark, but it kind of goes a bit lighter when it dries. And I really like this color so far. Let's try with the cotton buds. Oops. So I'm gonna get this cotton bud and dip it in. And do a little swish, I guess. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that's stunning. Okay, I do love my pebbles. Um, I'm going to set that down there. Close this before I spill it. Make sure it's airtight because I have a habit of not closing my drink bottles tightly enough. And sometimes they go everywhere when they're in my bag. Um, that's the swatch there. I'll see if I can get um, another video of it in the sunlight. Um, but I can't see... Oh, I can see the faintest shimmer. Um, but I don't know if it's because I haven't like shaken it up very well. And if we go on to the other side of the Stalogy, you can see that there's a little bit of ghosting but no glue through. And I reckon I'm going to start using this to sign... Um, invoices off because it's a really pretty color and start journaling with this as well um because i've just been using the dark blue from that comes with the Kawako to journal but i want to switch things up so so i think i'm gonna 
fill the Calico converter with this one, even though I said I wanted to use a black and a burgundy. Um, or maybe I'll use the Ferris wheel press, I don't know. I think I'm prematurely kind of deciding because I've only swatched one so far. I should probably swatch all of the inks I have ordered before I make a final decision. Let's go on to the next color that I got, which is the Ferris wheel press Dusk in Blue. So that looks to be this one here, and it looks like I got another blue color perhaps. I can't remember exactly what it should look like because it's been so long since I ordered, but I'm probably going to do that just below um, the blushing mushroom. So let's move the camera. Alright, okay, so I should dip that in there. Ooh, it kind of comes out and looks real cool. But yeah, we're going to dip that in there and then I am going to dry it off in the napkin. And I'm probably going to get myself a bin as well to throw out the Q-tips because um, I don't want to put them on my table just in case they go like, yeah. So let's swatch this one, um, which is the first wheel press Dusk and Bloom, as I mentioned just then. Oh, it's a deep blue, I think. I almost spilt it. Whoops. But let's go ahead and dip that in. Oh, I didn't shake it up. I don't know if I need to. Um, put that one down. We are going to close that just in case. And this one is called Dusk in Blue. And this is a really nice dark blue. It's not as dark as the Calico ink that you can see here. So if you compare the Calico and Dusk and Blue, the blue ink that comes in the Calico is more of a blue-black ink, I would say. And um, Dusk and Blue is more of a, like, a, it's a dark blue, but it's a bit more muted. Um, let's go ahead and... a bit more. I'm going to clean this before I set it down because I know I'm going to get ink everywhere otherwise and I will probably use the other side of the cone bud to swatch um, this color. So in it goes. Oops. Um, and There we go. Um, that was a bit ugly, so ignore that. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll set this down now. So, as you can see, Dusk and Blue is a bit of a dark blue. I'm not sure how much I like it because it's not a colour I would gravitate to normally. Um, it's a bit too much of a light dark blue for me. I do prefer more of a blue-black when writing. Not sure if I would buy a full bottle of that one. But that's the beauty of these samples from Death Bandit. Not sponsored by the way, um, just to reiterate. I'm just looking at the invoice and oops, the samples are two milliliters and they, yeah, they cost around $3, um, $3.50. Some of the limited edition ones cost a little bit more at $3.50, but super affordable. So you can test out different inks without having to buy like a full bottle because I imagine that would get really, really expensive. Yeah, and it satisfy your ink cravings. So um, let's move on to the next page and go to the next ink that I bought, which is the First Wheel Press Hanson Harbour Sage, which is a shimmer ink. Oh, so apparently um, the previous two don't have shimmer, or it doesn't specify that it's a shimmer ink. But that's really odd because you can clearly see that there's like metallic pieces at the bottom there. Um, but maybe they're not supposed to be like super glittery, uh, which would explain why I can't see like glitter specks in the blushing mushroom. Um, but apparently 
the Hampton Harbour Sage is a shimmer ink, which hopefully will turn out really pretty. But I wanted a green just to kind of switch things up a little bit because I normally write in warmer colors. Um, this is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and dip this in. So yeah, I wanted to be a little bit different and uh, go for some green inks and I got it all over the the barrel there but let's just go with it so this one is the ferris wheel press um hampton harbor sage <laughs> One thing that I really noticed while using this for the past three swatches is I don't find it super comfortable so I imagine it wouldn't feel nice to use um, this dip pen for journaling. So this would probably be a lot better for writing shorter headers or um, just doing swatches like I am right now. Um, so this is the Hampton Harvest Sage and so far I am liking what I see. It's a very nice green, but it's not too dark and it's not too yellow. Um, hello. I really like that color so far. I'm going to clean this off. Oh, I must have like put too much ink in because a lot of ink just came out. Probably didn't see that because it's not in frame, but let's clean that up before we set that down. Actually, I should probably move the napkin to the right side since I'm right-handed. Um, I'm going to move this over. Okay, that's better. Um, and let's get the cotton bud and do a little flash on the page. Oh, that is really nice. I really like the screen. I really like the screen. Okay. Oops, wrong way. Can we see shimmers? That's the question. I'm gonna just take this off to the side. No, I can't see any shimmer. What am I doing wrong? Do I shake it up? Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, so if you know um, why this shimmer isn't coming up, it could just be the lighting, um, because I do have like the warehouse lights on at the moment. Uh, I'm going to take it out into the sunlight in a, after the video and see if it works, but I do like the colour though. Um, it's a very, very nice green. It kind of reminds me of the green from the Tombows, I think. It's in that colour range. Um, but yeah, let's keep moving along because this video is going to be super, super long, I can tell already, and I've only gotten through three out of the six boxes I want to unbox. Um, so let's go to the next one, which is the Fluttering Heart. It's also by Ferris Wheel Press, and as you can tell, I am in love with the Ferris Wheel Press, um, inks because I've just been seeing them everywhere and they're just so gorgeous from what everyone's been um, showing on Instagram and YouTube like in their journals and stuff like that it just looks so stunning so I ended up getting like a lot of different um, inks from there because I knew that I would like them <laughs> especially for journaling um, this one is the fluttering heart it's a limited edition 2023 ink apparently and I believe this was like a pink kind of color and I think um, I've noticed also with this nib in particular that it writes quite thin and scratchy so I don't know if it's worth like going for more of a thicker nib like a medium tip nib because because I've only been using the Kawako with the dark blue ink the writing is very clear with the fine nib but I feel like with the, the colored inks at least um, a fine nib doesn't do it justice if that makes sense oh I'm gonna close this before I lift this up for you to see because I feel like the color payoff would show a bit better if you use like a medium or wider nib because you would have more ink when you write if that makes sense um but anyway um that's kind of like what i'm thinking 
at the moment but this is the fluttery heart it's like a very pale dusty pink and this is actually one of my favorite colors um the color is not really properly showing up on the camera but it is a dusty pink so far this would probably be my favorite and then blushing mushroom um and then hampton harbor sage and lastly dusky green but yeah this is really nice um i don't see any shimmer and like i said i'm not sure whether it's because i'm doing something wrong or it could be my lighting um lighting's not so good here right now or it could be because i need to shake it up um but if you have any ideas on what I'm doing wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. So in the future, when I'm doing swatch videos, I'll actually do the inks justice. <laughs> and yeah, so that's the flowing heart. Oh, we haven't done the cotton bud swatch yet. Let's do that before we move on to the next one, shall we? There we go. I'm probably not going to dip it in as far because I feel like it a little bit goes a long way. Um, and I don't want to waste the inks. So that's what it looks like. Ooh, it looks very nice. I really do like this color. Okay, so there's my awkward swatch. Um, yeah, the color's not really showing up very well under this lighting, but I will be sure to take some um, videos in, or videos or photos in natural sunlight for you guys. And like I mentioned before, this one's supposed to be a shimmer ink, but it's not showing up, so uh, the shimmer is at the bottom. So I wonder if I have to like shake it up to kind of like get it moving. But you can see there that there's a little tip at the bottom there, and all of the, all of the metallic bit is kind of like collecting there. So maybe I do have to shake it up. Um, oh yeah, it's kind of gone in now. So maybe I have to shake it up before I do it, but um, yeah, so this I guess is the fluttering heart without any shimmer in it because I didn't shake it up, um, but I really do like that colour so far. Um, so the next thing that I got was the fountain pen, which we've already gone through, and now we are up to the Ferris Wheel Press Sweet Honeydew, and this was like a really nice green online, but it's um, it kind of looked like a sage green, I think from memory but it looks very kind of fluoro in real life which kind of makes sense because honeydew or we call it um what do we call it in australia we don't call it honeydew do we we call it like melon honeydew is a very like light kind of green color and i apologize i'm like super out of frame for everything um I don't really do swatch videos very often as you can tell and now I am awkwardly trying to get the cap while I have a fountain pen. I will probably hold this in the meantime. Okay, so first we'll press, we'll press sweet honeydew. Okay, so this is like super light. I don't know if you can even see it on camera. You can probably, yeah you can I think. Um, but I can barely read this. Um, and it makes sense because honeydew is very very light and bright i would not normally have gone for this color in terms of inks um it's not really in the color palettes that i usually go for let's try with a q-tip let's use the other side of the one i already used but yeah it's a it's a bright green um so far not a big fan i mean my cup of tea it's a bit too fluorescent and bright for me and you can't really see what you write unless you're like looking up close so it looks a little bit more a little bit darker on camera but definitely my eyes are kind of having trouble um reading what i wrote in real life okay so i guess that would be probably my least favorite out of all of them so far let's move on to the last ink that oh no second to last ink but last ink from the dust bandits so this one is a robert oster honeybee and i really wanted a yellow one because i also 
like writing in browns and yellows, oddly enough, because I normally gravitate towards like pinks and reds and purples. Um, but I do actually enjoy writing with the what is it, the Zebra Sarasa Camel Yellow colour. So I figured I would pick out like a yellow for something different as well. Alright, so this is the only Robert Oster ink I got. I believe it's quite like a popular brand. Um, but as you can tell, I felt like I was really obsessed with like all the Ferris wheel press inks. Just from all the videos I've watched, they just turned out so stunning. But I didn't end up buying inks based off the videos I saw. I just like, I just went on the website and just selected a whole bunch of different inks. But anyway, here is the Robert Oster ink in Honey Bee. And I really do like this color so far. Um, Robert Oster. It does kind of remind me of the Zebra Sarasa Camel ink. Um, maybe a bit more like yellow than that one, but it's a nice color. It's a nice yellow, a yellowy orange. Basically, the name sums it up to a T. It's like a honey yellow. Just gonna clear off the nib before I set it down, and let's get a little bit of a yeah. It's a nice golden yellow. I really do like that. Surprisingly, since I mainly gravitate towards pinks, like I mentioned before, um, I think this is the Robert Oster Honey Bee, and the colour is not showing up true on camera, it's just because of my poor lighting, so please forgive me. Let me see if I can adjust it. No, I can't, but I will do close-up videos after I film this for you, um, but I really do like this colour. And last but not least, we have the Ferris Wheel Press Majestic Maple Syrup. Um, and this is a full bottle because I saw on, like I mentioned before, I saw on Charmaine Gillac's um, YouTube channel, she did a swatch of this and it was so pretty. So I knew I was going to love it. And I just wanted to have like a proper full bottle because I don't know if it's just me, but they kind of remind me of like potion bottles, like from Harry Potter. Um, and look at that. It's just so much glitter and gold so if i shake that up you can see that all the shimmer all right let's get started um with the swatch so we can move on to all of the other um ones i got okay so i'm gonna shake that up to try to get the um glitter on top um so I'm just, okay so this has like a stopper thing Oh, no, the ink went everywhere. Did you see that? <laughs> um, whoops. I don't think I got any on me. Oh, my gosh. But we are going to... And I do wonder, like, if different nibs pick up different inks differently and whether some nibs are more suitable. Like, I'm assuming since the nibs are made from different, like, materials and stuff like that, that... They would pick up differently, write differently, etc. But I've only had experience so far with the Kawako and this one. And I haven't tested both of the nibs with the same ink. I'm assuming also different papers are going to show up inks differently as well. But this one is the Ferris... Ferris Wheel Press Majestic Maple. Ah, oh, I spelled Majestic wrong. Majestic... Maple, and, and I'm really like craving waffles right now because of the name. Um, let's. I can't see any glitters. I'm 100% certain it's to do with my lighting, um, because of I've got artificial like warehouse lights at the moment, so the the lighting situation isn't the best at the moment. So far, I do like that color. I say that. It would be a toss-up between the flying heart and the just maple, and then blushy mushroom, and then powder sage, just the no, honeybee, just the blue, and then the honeydew one. Um, this is the honeydew one, which is the best one for my taste. Um, that was the haul from Desk Bandit. Let's move on to the next one because we still have three more boxes to go through. Okay, let's zoom out. You can probably see the mess that I made here. 
I'm going to move um, all of these samples to the side so I can make some more room for myself. So yes, uh, Scotch and Jutta are based in Queensland and I have ordered from them before. Um, and oops, let's take out the invoice there. Okay, so Scotch and Jutta were actually where I got the um, pen clip for my calico from. I had to just dig in right away so I could start using it on my calico. Um, but look how cute that packaging is. Uh, I love the little tissue paper with all the different stationery items in them. Um, I've got some bubble wrap to protect everything. So I also got a gold clip as well. But because I only got one and I have two fountain pens, I haven't quite figured out whether I want to put it on the black one or the um, burgundy one, but let's put it on the black one for now so I don't lose it. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like I did a little bit of a haul. So I got more ink from Scratch and Jot apparently. Um, and I also got some traveler's notebooks uh, for my Louis Vuitton passport uh, cover. Um, so I got that from them. Just some little notebooks for quick to do lists on the go, etc. And it looks like I got a bunch of Ferris wheel press items as well. So this one is um, a set of samples. It's called the Ink Charger Set, the Fashion District Collection. So it comes with three different inks, two of them are sparkling, um, and we'll swatch that in a second. And it looks like I also got a fountain pen swatch book um, from them as well, which I sh in hindsight I probably should have used um, for this video, but I might save it for another day. Oh, it's so pretty. Got a cute gold foiled cover and you s flip it up like so. And there's a little ink bottle with um, some gold foiling on each page. How pretty is that? Oh my gosh. I definitely should have used this um, at the start of the video. I should have unboxed this first actually, but I wanted to go in order of when I placed the order um, and when I received the boxes. So I'm definitely going to have fun playing with that later on. Um, probably take some photos for you later if I do get around to doing it today. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to dive into this because we have yet another Ferris wheel press um, set of things and clearly I was heavily influenced by all the videos I saw on YouTube and I don't want to get this out. Okay, so it says, oh, that's really cute. It says every great idea begins with a spark of imagination. I love cute touches like that. Um, how do I get this out? Is the question. Okay, so this is the first ink that I got out. It says, "Please use creative, uh, please use creatively, creatively." Oh my gosh, I can't speak today. Please use creatively. Um, it's a five mil ink sample and made in Canada. Oh my gosh, and it looks like a battery pack um, with the positive and negative sign on the side there. <laughs> so cute. And there's the Ferris wheel press logo on the other side there. And it says QA there, which I am assuming is Queen Allium, and that's a sparkling ink. Let's set this box to the side so we've got more room. And I will, I will be definitely keeping this tissue paper. It's too cute to toss out. Um, oh, I shouldn't have put that back in the box because now it's going to be... Alright, okay. Let's start off with this one. So this one was... Um, Queen Allium. So I'm assuming they're in the same order, but I guess because they are labelled on the bottom, you'll be able to tell. Um, let's move to a new page. Okay, so this is Queen Allium. Okay, so this one, I think that's the stopper there. By the way, oh, I forgot to put the stopper back on the other full bottle Ferris Wheel Press um, ink. I don't know if that's going to be an issue. I'll probably do that after this video. Um, I have to remember to not toss the entire thing out. But yeah, okay, so I've got some ink. This one was called... 
Okay, so it's definitely a warmer purple and that came out so nice. Probably gonna paint the whole page purple at this rate, but that is what it looks like and I really really like this colour so ooh, should I put that in the burgundy calico? Ooh, tough decision. Okay, this is not closing. Okay, because I don't want that to spill. Oh, there's, um, maybe I should shake it up a bit more to get the shimmer. This is not closing properly. Why? Is that on properly? No. Okay, I don't want this to spill, so... Maybe it's because the stopper's still on there. How do I get this out now? Um... Okay, let's just close it, and hopefully it doesn't spill out, because I no idea how I'm going to get that stopper out but we'll cross that bridge when we cross it but I really like this purple it's real nice um and like I said it's not showing up nice on the camera I'm so sorry I'm going to invest in a better lighting system for the future but I'll be sure to take some videos um in natural lighting for you or photos in natural lighting for you this one here I believe is Spadina Rose let's shake it up I don't know if no, this one doesn't have shimmer apparently, so I'm guessing I don't need to shake it up, but get into this. Oh, this looks like a really nice. This looks like it's. Oh! Oh, I really like that. First of press do not play when it comes to inks. Oh my gosh, that's stunning. I really like this color. Um, probably more so than Fluttering Heart, I would say, at this point, because. Um, it's a little bit easier to read. Um, so if we go back to Fluttering Hearts, um, comparing the two, this one is a very nice, like, light, dusty pink, whereas this one is more of a dark, dusty rose. And I probably shouldn't have closed that up because I want to do a swab. Flush. I'm probably gonna get a full bottle of this actually so so far I haven't actually said that I'm going to get a full bottle of any of the um, swatches I've done but I am definitely going to see if I can get a full bottle of this if they do stock a full bottle of this um, and the last one here is Bathurst I think I'm saying that right Bathurst blue denim and apparently it's a sparkling ink as well which you can see so you can see this oh, you can see the shimmer there I'm gonna shake it up to see if it's going to show up better when I swatch it um, that's a nice deep blue Let's, um, leave that this is like actually a good name for this color. It's definitely like a denim blue color. Um, and I really do like this. I really do like this color. Um, and let's do a little bit of a. Let's do a little bit of a swatch. Um, let's do a little bit of a swatch. Oh yeah, that's like a denim blue. Very, very pretty. I am impressed. So so far, I am a very big fan of this collection that I got from First World Press. And I hope they do have full bottles of the, what was it, the rose coloured one, the Spadina Rose, because I really want a full bottle of that now. All right, so that was the order from Scratch and Jotter. Let's move on to the next one um, so that this video doesn't end up being over an hour long, which I feel like it could be at this point in time. Alright, so next order is from Paper Cooker, who are based in New South Wales. And oh my gosh, I've just realized I think I have gotten, like from this video so far, I've gotten an order from Western Australia, Queensland, Victoria, and now New South Wales. 
Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales, um, Western Australia. So that's four different states so far. Wow. Um, so these parcels have come all across Australia. And as you can tell, currently on opens, I did not peep into this because I actually, this was like one of the last boxes I received. And by the time I got it, October was just um, in, it was just crazy. So much happened. We found some stray kittens and a mama near the office um, and we ended up catching them. It was kind of a big thing to catch them um, because they were very, very scared as you can imagine. So we ended up taking them home and my partner took them and fostered them for the weekend because the animal welfare aren't open on the weekends. Oh, this is kind of hard to open. I wonder if I can cut it open instead. But anyway, the animal welfare and the vets aren't open on the weekends. So we ended up having, oh, my partner ended up fostering them for the weekend before we dropped them off at animal welfare. And they've been really, really nice um, in that they've been giving us updates on what's been happening to little kitties and we've just gotten updates that they are with a foster home at the moment and once they get put up for adoption they'll let us know which adoption agency that they will be um okay that was a fail but they'll let us know which adoption agency that they've been sent to so hopefully we get to visit them one last time before they go to their forever homes but yeah that was um one thing in October um another thing was uh, my grandpa got admitted to hospital um all of a sudden and that was a huge scare for the entire family he had emergency surgery and is thankfully out of hospital right now but um that was a big thing so I yeah Anyway, now we've got the box open. Um, this is the order from Paper Cooker and beautiful packaging, much like Scratch and Jotter, kind of makes me want to get like custom tissue paper myself. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's carefully open this up. Oh no, I ripped it. Dang it. Um, packing peanuts. I'm gonna take these packing peanuts out and then I'll be back. Okay, so I did a little bit of excavating and we have reached the bottom of the box um, and the contents of the box. So I don't exactly remember what I got from Paper Cooker, but I guess we'll find out in this video. It's been so long since I placed this order. Um, but it looks like once again, I got a bunch of Ferris wheel press and something else. I've got the invoice here. So it looks like I got a Midori dip pen, another one apparently. And um, Lady Rose storied blue in full bottles and a Ferris wheel press in medium nib. Okay, so um, past me clearly thought that I would need a, or thought I would make use of a medium nib because um, I mentioned previously that the fine nibs were a little bit hard to. Um, it was a, a little bit hard to see the ink with the fine nibs. So I ended up ordering this um, Ferris wheel press medium nib apparently. And this one is called French Vanilla. Um, so it's a very light vanilla -y color as you can see there. Oops, I think I got it upside down. But yeah, this one is a medium nib and I believe it's from the same collection because it's called the Carousel. Um, so I'm assuming it has a little course on a carousel there which is stunning like I love the attention to detail that first Ferris wool press has but I won't be doing a fountain pen um, test in this video because I need to figure out how to work the whole converter system but it looks like we have Lady Rose I saw this in a video and it looks like it was going to be a very nice color um, and I got a full bottle of storied blue, but I don't really remember what it's supposed to look like. 
Um, so we'll do a swatch of that in a second. And last but not least, I got a Midori dip pen. Um, so another dip pen, apparently. Um, ooh, and that one's pretty. I love the hexagonal um, barrels. I definitely find it a lot comfortable to write with hexagonal barrels compared to a rounded barrel. And especially, I've noticed as well with this with a sailor dip pen that because it kind of tapers in the middle there, I don't find it the most comfortable to write with. Um, definitely enjoy writing with a wider barrel instead. But here is the Midori dip pen. We probably won't test it in today's video. Or should we test it with the inks? I think we shall. Okay, let's do that. So this is the Midori dip pen. And yes, I got a medium nib because I figured I would switch things up, um, I guess, with paper cooker's order. Um, and definitely a lot more comfortable than the sailor version so yeah we will go with that and it's got a bit more weight to it as well compared to the um sailor pen which is super super lightweight like no um no weight to it at all whereas this one is definitely um a little bit weightier and i do wonder though where the ink is supposed to hold um because unlike the sailor one it doesn't have that little pull thing so i wonder if i have to like dip it all the way to the end i don't quite know what those little prongs are for um but i don't feel like i would dip all the way there do i because that would just get ink all over the barrel um let's just go up to the md and then see how we go all right this is definitely a video full of experimentation um okay so we have the two inks here we have one by story um one called story blue and one called lady rose um let's get the stylogy back out um and let's unbox, let's go with Lady Rose because I feel like I'm going to love this colour. And I don't want to ruin the boxes because they're so pretty. Um, okay, let me get a knife. These are what the bottles look like. My collection is growing <laughs> and I, I think I bought everything within like a week or two of each other. Um, so definitely gone down the rabbit hole. Oh wow, okay. I just realized that it has like a colored label um, that corresponds with the color of the ink, which is kind of cool. It's very pretty. So definitely nice to have on display. Um, but yes, these are my potion bottles. Let's... Oh. I just got like ink all over me. I think I do need the stopper on the Majestic Rose. Otherwise it's just gonna go everywhere. Um, so let's put that back before we um, make more of a mess. Okay, so I just washed my hands, but I think I still have ink under my fingernails. So please uh, ignore that, um, but oh no it's kind of like dripped to the side um i need napkins okay let's clean this mess up oh no i think i stained my table whoops can you see that there <laughs> it's not coming off ah my white table forever getting stained okay i'm just going to have to uh i'm just going to have to live with that okay let's set that on there so it doesn't stain the table okay moving on let's uh swatch the lady in rose i have seen this in a video um a couple of weeks ago um oh the stopper came out okay so we have the midori pen now um in the fine nib and i'm just gonna like i mentioned before 
um, dip it up to the MD line, MD logo, sorry, because I don't think you would dip the whole thing in. But maybe I'll watch a video after this to double check. Um, let's also zoom you guys in a bit. So this one is called Lady Rose. And fingers crossed this writes. Oh yeah, it does write. But not a lot. And that's shaking, so that's very uh, precarious. But um, maybe... Sorry, I'm not in frame at the moment. But maybe I do go deeper. I'm going to dip it, dip the barrel in. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm going to dip it all the way to the barrel and see if that does anything. Oh, wow. Okay, so you can kind of see the ink kind of has like caught there. So maybe that's what I was supposed to do. Maybe not necessarily all the way to the barrel. Oops, Lady Rose. Okay. Um, with the like, um, you can definitely see the colors a lot better with the, f the wider nib. It's definitely a lot more comfortable to write with as well. And yeah, I like this so far. Um, and I really do like the color. It's like I mentioned, that dusty pink kind of color that I like to go for. I would say Lady Rose definitely favorite so far. Spadina Rose compared to Lady Rose is more vibrant and a Fluttering Heart is more of a pale pink. Um, but I do I do like them all. Um, let's do a cotton bud swatch of Lady Rose. Definitely more of a neutral kind of pink. Compared to the other ones. Okay, so that's stunning. So definitely favorite so far. <laughs> I keep saying that, um, but it just keeps getting better and better um, with Ferris Wheel Press. I feel like I want to have the entire collection now, um, but that would be very expensive. So for now, okay, so Story Blue, which is a, I'm assuming blue as the name suggests, um, so far, I don't see any shimmers like the other ones, so I'm guessing this is not a shimmer ink as well. Um, let's go to the next page. I should have like opened up the paper cooker order first, so I could use the medium nib. Um, but you know, we know for the next video. Uh, let's take off the stopper. So, storied blue. Let's test this baby out. Okay, so... I hope I don't knock this over while I write. Okay, story blue. A little bit of a swab. Yeah, it's a it's a greeny blue. I do like that. Okay. Um those are the Ferris Wheel Press um bottles. Oh, I forgot the stopper again. Okay. Don't want to make that mistake again. Let's put that back on. So my thoughts so far on all of the um, inks is that clearly I have an obsession with Ferris Wheel Press and I probably should start exploring other brands. I have is the Sailor one, which is Potsu Potsu, but I didn't want to swatch that since I'm going to gift that to someone. And um, the only other branded ink that I got was the Robert Oster honeybee color which I really really do like um, so maybe I will start exploring um, more inks from that brand but if you have any suggestions of other inks that I should try um, please leave me a comment down below so I can check them out with that being said though I do have some happy mail from um, Anna from ABC plans she is from Melbourne so I definitely covered like all of the different states except for South Australia, which is where I'm from, Northern Territory, ACT, and Tasmania. So are there any planner brands from those states? Because I would love to check you guys out if there are. Um, but for now, back on topic, we have this lovely happy mail from Anna, and she's put some cute stickers on the box. I won't 
showing you the back because it's got her details um, but I am going to open up this box and see what she sent me so before I get started just a little bit of a backstory of how I ended up ended up with this happy mail I posted on Instagram that I had got my first uh, fountain pen and I was after like suggestions on inks to get and like how it all works like nibs to try brands to try etc and i actually suggested that i um place an order with the dust bandit because they have samples and then she was kind enough to offer to send some of her own personal samples over so thank you so much anna for sending over the samples i am going to unbox this now i'll also leave a link to her social media down in the description below as well as all of the other different companies that I've shopped from in this video oh my gosh okay so we have opened up the package and these are the samples that she sent me and how gorgeous is her handwriting by the way done swatches for me already which is very very kind of her um, so thank you so much Anna for being so considerate and doing that for me. Um, so she sent me the Pilot Iro Shizuku um, Tsukushi, um, some, pilot, some other ones. I'm not going to try to pronounce these because I'm probably going to butcher the name. Um, so two Pilot ones, two Robert Oster ones, which I just mentioned that I wanted to get more of. So that's very convenient. Um, Sydney Darling Harbour. Oh. So that's like after the Sydney Darling Harbour Bridge, I'm assuming. Um, Van Diemen's Ink, Eucalyptus Regnans, Van Diemen's Ink, Van Diemen's Ink. She sent me a lot of greens, which I do like. A dark blue, a coffee, I would say, but a, oh, it's called Cafe Crema. And a grey and a dark red, which I actually love all these colours. So thank you so much, Anna. Um, for sending these through. Very excited to dig into this. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to need to. Oh, she sent me a letter as well. Okay, I'm going to take that off camera and read it. So I'm going to read this out to you. I thought there would be like personal information, but um, actually, I'll show it to you so you can see as well. How neat is her handwriting? Um, she said, Hi, May. Welcome to the wonderful and expensive, <laughs> yeah, that's right, um, world of fountain pens. I can't wait to see what pens you end up getting. I hope you enjoy these samples, and I know they are a good kickstart to your, your new collection. All the best, Anna. And the one that she wrote with, I think, is the Wearing Goo. Jane Eyre, which actually I think I'm going to get after this because I really like this purple um, colour. And the paper is the old Tomoe River paper from Hobonichi. The black ink, oh, she, she also sent me a black ink, is a waterproof document ink, and she found that once dry, you can highlight over it, which is really good to know because I haven't tested out highlighting. But yeah, I, I think I'm not going to swatch these because Anna's been so kind enough to already swatch them for me. And I feel like this video is just going to end up going on forever. Um, so yeah, I will take closer photos for you just so that you can see what they look like in natural lighting. And these are all the beautiful samples that I can't wait to try out in my journal. Thank you again, Anna, for all for sending through those samples. I am really excited to add them to my collection. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you're a regular user of fountain pens and you have any recommendations of inks to try or pens to try or just overall um, any tips and tricks on making the swatching and unboxing video experience a little bit more nicer um, please let me know down below I would love to know your thoughts and and yeah I hope you enjoy this video if you're new to fountain pens or you haven't bought a fountain pen before um, are you going to make the leap now so I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will talk to you soon bye